having uh, photography be something that I could put my energy and focus on and put things into was something that was really helpful because you know I grew up in a very complicated household and you know my um, um, my father was um, you know quite difficult sometimes and it wasn't around the rest of the time and we uh, um, you know like photography was this thing that um, it enabled me to like it was this other thing I could be good at you know and this other thing that I, I, I was able to um, uh, use to go out into the world and, and, and be successful and, and, and you know, a lot of it, I, my father said uh, when I left uh, to go to college, um, you know, I, I think he said uh, he'll be back, <laughs> which is really not like the best thing to say to your kid. Like, well, he didn't say it to me. He said it to my mother, but like uh, he clearly didn't uh, uh, think I was going to do well. So, but uh, I actually showed him wrong. <laughs> it took a while to get to the artistic part of photography because I had not knowing very much at all about photography, actually not knowing anything about photography, and just, you know, having that experience in high school, like the teacher, you know, you know, said I was good and he helped me, you know, um, uh, apply for scholarships and things like that. And, uh, and then, but they were, uh, you know, ended up being, you know, a school that I went to was for more uh, commercial photography or, or, or like to do uh, advertising or, or whatnot like that. And, uh, and it wasn't really about art photography, um, but for about two years I studied and, and, and it was a really good experience in retrospect because I learned all the technical parts of photography and I learned to become super fluid with the medium. And, uh, and, um, but then when I really had kind of my first exposure to art um, was when I had taken a workshop um, back in, uh, in, in Colorado, in Denver, Colorado. It was with Roy DiCarava. Um, who's an, an African-American artist that um, um, has made really incredible work. And, and he, I remember his, his work was, his work is very dark and moody. And uh, I remember we'd go into the dark room and he would, uh, uh, you'd bring your print out and you'd show it to him. And he would, every time he would say, darker, darker, darker. And, uh, and that, and you know, and I was trying to figure out what he was, what, what he meant by all that. But, you know, and then eventually it clicked you know, and then like realizing that like, you know, a photograph doesn't have to have the l regular levels of contrast and doesn't have to reside on like, you know, this grayscale of being in the middle. And uh, that was a crucial lesson for me. And, uh, and I think that after, after hearing him say that and, and kind of like for a whole week, you know, like, you know, like pounding that in, I realized that like it, 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 in retrospect, like, like that had a huge impact on my the way I, I, I print pictures because it's I never have been bound to any kind of exact reality, you know, with the way the photographs are printed. I always have said like I, I photograph like a documentarian, but I print like a painter. And that's very much where that kind of that's the beginning of that happening was that, you know, like not being stuck with I got to get this right. You know, it's like. It was about, I have to, how does this feel? What does this feel like instead of what does it look like? And that was something that was really uh, crucial. And then when I, um, I worked for a couple of years after that, after undergraduate, I worked as a commercial photographer's assistant, which was a very, uh, a very good thing to do because it was something that, it enabled me to um, learn how to get things done, which is a very interesting thing. Like sometimes you go to art school and you, uh, you think all the time and you're in your head and, 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 and you can do things, but like, can you do things well, quickly, and then repeatedly? And that was something that I learned like from this photographer I worked for, John Goodman. And uh, I remember one time he said, uh, I came out of the dark room and I, I, made a, I was making a print for his portfolio and, and, uh, and he said, you know, it's really good, but like, you're too academic. And I was like, I, I did not know, I had no idea what that meant. And, uh, and I thought about it and then like, I'm like, oh, I know what he means. He's like, he wants me to go faster, you know? Um, and so, uh, and, and that's, he wanted everybody to go faster. So I, 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 that's how I figured it out. But, uh, but it was something that was good because actually even to this day, like, you know, I, I remember like, I've learned how much you can do in a day from being at that studio, you know? And, um, uh, and I've kind of carried that lesson on. And then where things really kicked in with me for having a mentor for photography, was with um, when I moved to California and started to study at the California College of the Arts with Larry Sultan. And Larry Sultan was um, an incredible, amazing 
a, a, a mentor, teacher, like human being, um, photographer. Like he was the most articulate person I'd ever met in my life, and uh, and just like gloriously poetic and, and accurate with the things that he he said. And uh, um, and there's things I think about every single day that I had conversations with him about when I was studying, and then, and then also afterwards, you know, we we became friends, and I ended up teaching uh, at, at the same school, and I, I probably taught for about 10 years with him before he passed away.